Hello and welcome to Tiny Desk Knitting with Emma. Today uh, I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants because I uh, got back from England last night. Um, I got back to Baltimore around 10 p.m. Um, and I'm like still I'm really jet lagged. Like I went, to, I was exhausted and I went right to bed, but I woke up at like 3:30. Um, so I'm recording this at uh, just before 7 a.m. <laughs> on a Monday morning and I have to go to work after this. So that's fun. Um, yeah, so I like, I mean, I didn't really do a ton of knitting in England, which is um, my, like I explained to everyone I saw, I was like, it's a good thing. Like if I was knitting the whole time, it would have meant that I was really bored and we didn't have a whole lot to do. So I did some knitting and I will show you some of it. Um, and I did a ton of knitting on the plane home yesterday. Um, I knit like an entire sleeve and finished the body of a sweater, although I couldn't try it on because I was on the plane and so I think I might take out the hem of the sweater and lengthen it a little bit because I've got plenty of yarn left after I finish sleeve number two. It's nice. It's a nice sweater with British wool, but I didn't get it while I was there. Um, okay, so yeah, I was in England for a week and I've decided that this video is going to be partially about some of the things that I got while I was there to show you some yarn and also... Um, I wanted to, a bunch of the yarn that I got was for socks, so, and it was like particular sock yarns, mostly like woolly ones, and so I thought I would talk a little bit about woolly socks, and um, like some of the woolly you can get that's either 100% wool or just kind of woollier, even if it has nylon content, um, because there's lots of great stuff you can get, especially in the UK. Um, I should sit up. I am wearing my rose hip sweater by Anna Johanna. From Strands of Joy. If you check out the Woolly Thistle Shopcast from just a couple days ago, uh, last Friday, there's a segment on me talking about this. I used John Arben Yarnadelic for the yoke in the lay floor, which is a kind of a sport weight um, Falkland Islands Corridale. It's really nice, beautiful colors. Uh, spoiler, I will be talking about John Arben in this episode because <laughs> um, I got some John Arben yarns. And the body is Juniper Moon Patagonia, which, um, I mean, the segment on the Woolly Thistle is all about how I repurposed, like, I frogged a sweater because I hated it, and it was almost done, and I just was like, I'm never gonna wear this, and I frogged the entire thing. Um, I had to have one of my friends untangle all the yarn for me because I tried to wash it so that it would, like, relax because it looked like ramen noodles, and then he untangled it all for me, and then a bunch of it turned out a lot of my friends wanted to untangle the yarn, and so now I have all these people in my life who apparently like to untangle yarn. So if you get your yarn into a yarn barf, don't throw it away. Check with your friends because apparently some people find untangling very meditative. Um, but do watch my um, segment on the Woolly Thistle because you should always watch the shop guests. They're amazing, like so much fun and like a good time. Um, but also you can hear about the sweater. One thing I will say is that I didn't put enough buttons on it. I only had six buttons. With a sweater with small buttons, you really, I should have had double the number here. Um, I can fix this by adding snaps, which I think I'm gonna do in between each button, set a pair of buttons, I think I'm gonna add snaps. Snaps are invisible. You sew one end in here and one end on there and snaps on. So you can't actually see them, but we'll just keep the sweater closed. But I don't mind wearing it kind of open like this. It's fine like this too. Yeah, over a t-shirt. It's, um, it's pretty light because it's kind of sport weight, but it's nice and um, warm because this is a wool and, this Jennifer Moon's a wool and spun yarn. So um, it kind of feels like Brooklyn Tweed Loft. It's a little less easy to break than Brooklyn Tweed Loft, if you know what I mean. It's like a little less springy, but it's high yardage and it's pretty good um, value for like what you get, which it'll, sometimes it'll say it's DK yarn. Some people say it was, it's fingering weight yarn, but based on the yardage, it's more to me like a sport weight. Anyway, that's it um, on the sweater. So let's get to it. Have some tea here, obviously in a British mug. Um, okay, this is, I did get my tea. I get tea in England every time I go because I like PG tips in the white box, which is like the cheapest Tesco tea you can get. Um, but you can get it on Amazon. It's just like, this costs three pounds for 140 tea bags. I think 140, 160 tea bags. And the 240 box, which is what I usually get on Amazon is like $17 and this was three pounds. And I was like, I'm just gonna get that there. 
because that lasts me like, I don't know, it's like the 240 thing box will last me like almost a year. Um, not really, but I don't really drink it in the summer because it's too hot. Yeah, maybe like almost a year. So that's plenty to last me like six months. I drink a lot of tea at work. Um, but I don't know if you've been to England or you live in England or like anything, you may know that tea just doesn't really taste the same here, even if it's the same tea bags. Uh, I think it's because of the water. Um, it has like a much nuttier, kind of more full taste if you have the same exact tea in England. Um, it might be the milk, I don't know. It's just, it's not the same, but it's still good. Um, I also got some, I guess I'll show these now. I got my, I'll show you my favorite things that I got. Hobnobs, chocolate hobnobs. I like chocolate digestives too. I got some of those for one of my um, coworkers, but I like hobnobs. You can get digestives here in the store anyway. You can get like McVitie's in the international aisle in Baltimore. You can get digestives. You can't get hobnobs. At least you can't get chocolate hobnobs. <laughs> and I got some Cadbury chocolate. I like fruit and nut a lot. And um, one of my favorite like candy bars to get is the Twirl, which is um, if you've ever had a flake bar, it's a flake bar, but it's dipped in more chocolate. And I really like the orange one. It's my favorite. So, um, yeah, that's what some of the, like, um, little goodies that I brought. Um, yeah, thought I should share. People in England definitely already know about all these things, but if you're, like, planning a trip, those are my favorite, um, like, little goodies to bring home. Okay, so I guess I will talk about the trip um, and like show you the yarns that were acquired on the way. Um, so I went on Friday night, flew from Philadelphia because I had miles and um, my, <laughs> my, my trip was sponsored by a ton of American Airlines miles and my tax return because uh, I had a big tax return from last year, which was really nice. But also I got to stay with a bunch of friends, which was really, I mean, like I wanted to go to see them anyway. Like that's why I went, um, but uh, and then I didn't have to pay for hotels, which was why I could go. So I was really grateful for that. Um, England doesn't have COVID restrictions right now at all. So I didn't even have to take a COVID test before I went, but I took a COVID test at work every single day before I went. <laughs> Um, didn't get COVID. I had to take a test on Saturday before I came back on Sunday and I was negative, which was good. But, um, yeah, it was, so I got there on Saturday morning and I went to Guildford for how many days? Until Wednesday. I went to Guildford until Wednesday morning. Um, although I spent Tuesday in London. Guildford is just Southwest of London. It's kind of like, um, a suburb and, uh, it's about 40 minutes on the train. It's pretty easy to get there. And that is where I spent my field work um, time when I was doing research there. Um, my thesis was about girl choristers and women who are running girl chorister programs in England. And one of my um, one of my case studies was about Gil Guildford Cathedral. And so I have a what I call my host family. <laughs> um, I have a, a a colleague who I wrote my thesis about actually, and her husband who live there. Um, and so it was really nice to go stay with them for a few days and not have to like, I mean, I got to go to church and like not just like write stuff down and record interviews and, and just kind of like be there with, with them. Um, they're like, um, they're very, uh, fun and like a really, we have a really good time. They took me on a couple of walks and, um, yeah, they're, they're younger than my parents, but, um, but they're, they're kind of like. Yeah, they're kind of like my English host parents, like that's what I call them. <laughs> and so I had made one of them a sweater and it did fit him. So that was really exciting because I made Catherine a sweater when I did my thesis. I wanted to thank her for like all, of, basically all of that um, because without um, Catherine, there wouldn't have been a thesis that I could write. So I had made her a sweater. Um, and so I, had, I wanted to make one for, for Patrick, Catherine's husband, and it fit him. As you, if you saw my last episode, that's what that, the episode was about and I was really hoping it would fit and it did although I didn't take any pictures because it was so warm the whole time I was there that um it was too warm to wear a woolly jumper so that was like a really nice surprise um it was not great weather here 
in Baltimore last week, but it did not rain a single day. I was in England and it was in Fahrenheit. It was like between like high fifties to like mid seventies every day. So Celsius, it was like between like 10 and 25 degrees. 25 would have been hot. It wasn't quite 25, but it was like 23 on some days, um, which was amazing. I was walking around London in a t-shirt. Um, it was just stunningly gorgeous and all of the daffodils were out. Um, if you live in England or you've been there in the spring, you know that there's daffodils everywhere. <laughs> it's like, they're just everywhere in, in the end of March and it was beautiful. So that was a treat. Um, so I got there on Saturday and I had shipped a package to my host family's house from John Arbin because I really wanted some John Arbin yarn. Um, that, so sometimes you can get John Arbin here, like the Woolly Thistle carries um, Yarnadelic and um, they carry Exmoor Sock, which I will show you some because I got a couple of different colors of Exmoor Sock. Um, and they also carry Devonia. Devonia is easier to find also in shops around England, like in London, one of the stores I went to, Knit With Attitude. They have Devonia in DK and Fingering, and they have Yarnadelic. They might have had Exmoor Sock too, if I didn't look. I don't think they did, but they had Yarnadelic, um, which is the line that's based on um, like colors they made while listening to records, which is really cool. Yarnadelic is a really nice, like the Cordell is just like so round and like, so shiny um, and it's so lustrous and go absolutely gorgeous so if you are looking for a really nice british yarn that you can get in the states to knit like a sweater with or gloves or a hat or anything that's like a sport weight kind of definitely check out yarnadelic um, and again they have it at the woolly thistle so you can get it there you can get a lot of these yarns at the woolly thistle that i'm going to show you um, so again some of the john arbin ones are a little bit harder to source um, but yeah, so I'll just show you what I sent myself, sent myself from John Arbin. Uh, this is the first one. It's an Exmoor Sport Blizz 4 ply. This is the lightest color. So it's, it's got some little moss on it. That's probably just from being in the bag. I don't think that was on it. Um, this is a fingering weight yarn. It's uh, 400 meters, 100 grams. It smells really, really sheepy. It's th this one is the lightest color of the three Swart Blaz colors. So it's 30% Swart Blaz and 70% Exmoor Blueface, which is a cross between a Blueface Luster and an Exmoor Horn. So they call it an Exmoor Mule, which is a fun fact. Yeah, this is the lightest one. So I got this um, to go with the Hebridean yarn that I have left over from Daughter of a Shepherd to make a hap. I thought that would be nice. And I could make a, a pretty big one because I have like probably like 75 grams of that other darker Hebridean um, and Sword Plus yarn left. And then I have 100 grams of this. So the Woolly Thistle is having a hat cow starting in April. And um, you can kind of do various like levels of the cow. Like you can pay some, pay more money and get some like, like a tote bag and like you get extra content, but you can still participate in the hat. Cow just, if you want to knit a hat, doesn't cost any money. So. I mean, you'll have to buy the yarn, but <laughs> you might already have some. Okay, got that from John Urban. And then this, this the, there it is. So these two are from the Appledore line, which is a DK yarn. It's quite, um, I think people would call it rustic. It's 40% Devon Close Wool, 40% Romney, and 20% Exmoor Blueface. And this color, which is kind of like a heathered, or you can see all the colors in there, heathered kind of medium teal with some like grayish in it. It's called Tom Pup. And this one is called Sheep's Nose. And if you look really closely, it's like light blue mixed with some kind of like almost salmon pink and like white, but it was the blue in it that I, I liked these together. So I got two of each to make a sweater. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna do something striped or maybe just like, um, might do like the um, like one of Andrea Mowry's kind of like slip stitch patterns. I think I was thinking of making is it called ochre moss. I'm thinking of making ochre moss with this, just like a pullover with some just mosaic color work kind of have these two go together. So those are exciting. I'm gonna put them here. And is the red in here? Okay, I only have one. Of, I mean, I got two of these, but I only grabbed one. This is the Harvest Hues line 
which is 60, they're all of the skeins are 65% Falklands Merino and then 35% Sorplas. So it's like the knit by numbers colors, which is just all Falklands Merino, except it's mixed with Sorplas, which is a like dark brown kind of Hebridean color. So it's kind of like the, it's like a muted version of the knit by numbers um, rainbow kind of, and it's called Harvest Youth. And this comes, I think you can get a worsted as well. This is fingering weight. I got two of these also for a shawl or something. I've been kind of on a shawl kick and I thought I like this red a lot and I wanted to try it. This is worsted spun. All of his oh, yarns are worsted spun. So this is the same as this in terms of um, specs. It's 100 grams and 400 meters. This one doesn't quite smell as woolly because I think it's been through like the dye process and it's been washed a lot. Um, really nice, really nice. And then I got two different colors of Exmoor sock. Oh my God, you have to get two of each if you want a full pair of socks. So this is called Bell Heather and I think I got two of each of these. Um, it's four ply. The label's so cute. I just think it's great. Um, 50 grams, 200 meters per gram, or excuse me, per, 50 gram skein. So, and there's nylon in this one. This one's 60% Exmoor Blueface, which is that um, cross between the Blueface last year and Exmoor Horn. Um, 20, super washed, 20% super washed Coriel, 10% Swarp Blaze, and 10% nylon. So, really fun. Oh yeah, embracing the characteristics of our local Exmoor sheep as a durable, machine washable yarn in an array of North Devon inspired shapes. This is nice. And I got this one, which is called Mackerel Sky at Wild and Woolly in London. Sorry, I'm just taking, taking a sip of tea. I had to pause it so that I could put some milk in this tea. It's almost the same. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> um, so let's talk about Wild and Woolly. I'll show you this so you can see it a little better. It's the light's coming in now, and it's, it's actually, this is a pretty accurate color <laughs> um, showing. A little heathered, just gorgeous, like kind of teal color. Um, yeah, so Wild and Woolly is a store in East London in Clapton. It's on Lower Clapton Road. It's out east. It's like, um, yeah, it's kind of near Islington. So it's a lovely little shop. Um, it's, yeah, it's small. Like, I mean, the actual shop is pretty small, but they have this really ingenious, um, like shelving method where there's these like slanted shelves with these big boxes that are just full of like all the colors of one yarn. And they have also a wall with some hanging skeins, but like they have more of every color. It's just like up above and they'll just grab it for you. Or it's sometimes it's in there, like back in the basement. I think they have a, a downstairs. Um, so they really, it's just for display and then they have like tons and you can get, um, like a sweater quantity most of the time of whatever you want. <clears throat> it's just like they, they have this way of kind of saving space by just showing you one of every color, which is nice. So the <laughs> last time I was in England, um, I had to meet Catherine in London to go back to Guildford. And so I got into London. This was a Saturday. I got into London on Saturday morning and I was meeting up with her around four. So I had like four or five hours to just kind of go to knitting stores with all of my luggage. Um, so I went uh, to Wild and Woolly first and I had to take the Piccadilly from Heathrow, which is in West London, all the way out to East London. So it took like an hour just on the tube. And then I took a bus um, through East London and I got there. I was, I had to stop at a, um, at like a little like co-op, really like it's like a little tiny fancy grocery store. And um, cause I was really hungry and like, I felt gross cause I'd been on a plane all night and hadn't slept. So the guy who owned it was really, no one else was in there and he was really nice. And he was like, you can go change in our bathroom or like, and like, you know, brush your teeth in there and stuff. He was just so nice. And then I got like some green juice and I like drank a bunch of green juice because I felt super gross and I felt a lot better after that. And then I went to Wild and Woolly cause it was like right across the street. And um, I had my luggage, I had my suitcase. It wasn't too big, but I had a suitcase with me and they were like, this is the first place you came in England, oh my gosh. Um, and I remember buying a sweater quantity of tuca wool in the like beautiful kind of grassy green color, which is called Leto, L-E-H-T-O. 
and I got, get compliments on that color all the time on the sweater. Um, so you can get too cool there. <laughs> that was the first time I ever bought too cool. Um, it's gorgeous. Yeah, they have a lot of wool yarns, like in, you know, wild and woolly, you might expect. It's a lot of um, kind of rustic-y, nice yarns. They also have, um, which I bought last time, they have, um, what's it? Oh, the um, the Donegal Darnie that the Wooly Thistle just got in the air and weight. They have that in um, finger and weight, which I got last time I was there. And it's really nice. I still haven't made a sweater with it, but it's gorgeous. And it's like in a beautiful dark red. <coughs> okay, so I got this one there. Um, give me these other ones there. I guess I did better than I thought. I got, well, I got this. Here, I'll show you this. Um, there was another one. Maybe I'm wrong. So, another yarn that I got there, which again, you can get this at the Woolly Thistle or some various places. Definitely in the US, there's a few. Woolly Thistle has it, I think, um, a store in Washington State that's really nice. What's it called? It's like famous and it's out in Washington and like, Washington State out west. Um, I bet a bunch of people are yelling at right now at the screen. Um, they have a big lobby thing. Anyway, I'll put it in the show notes if I can't remember. Mondim by Rosa Pomar. This is a Portuguese yarn. It is a sock yarn, so it's four ply. It's super tight twist and it is 100% wool. Um, so you can really make anything with it. It doesn't feel like a sock yarn necessarily. You could hold this with mohair, which lots of folks do. You can make socks, you can make a hat, hold a double with something else. I don't know, make a sweater, do what you want. I have a pair of socks. I'm working on a sock right now. Um, you, I'm not gonna show you the front because it's not till July, <laughs> but it is gorgeous, the yarn. <laughs> really, this is just the back, the unpatterned kind of vanilla side but it's really heathered and pretty. And I have a pair of socks that I've knit in Mondeen that I got at whatever that store's called. <laughs> it's a really nice store, what's it called? I don't know. This colorway is called 303, the red. This one is the orange, whatever that one is. <laughs> it's like heathered orange. These are the Samphire socks by Helen Stewart. An extremely British thing, Samphire. Samphire is, um, it's like seaweed that you can eat and it grows in Cornwall. Um, and like on the, in, I think maybe in Devon, on the coast, basically it's like a coastal kind of sea grass. It's super bright green. I did not knit these in bright green and I feel weird about that. It's like the brightest green plant you've ever seen and you eat it, you make like salad, samphire salad or something. Anyway, it looks like this. It has, it's like tendrils and all curly and cool. So, um, and then the back is this nice kind of waffle pattern. But I knit these almost two years ago. I wear them a lot. I've worn them in boots before, like in my Blundstones, like not for like long walks, but like to go to the store briefly. Nothing, no, it doesn't even pill on the bottom. You can tell it's a little felted down, but you kind of want that on a woolly sock. Um, and it's like a felted kind of on the back of the heel, but it's not, there's no holes. Might be if I wore them all the time. Um, I will say, um, I will say about that. Uh, these are not super wash. You have to hand wash them. So be careful when you're buying woolly sock yarn. Make sure it's super wash if you're planning to put it in the washing machine. Or just put it in like delicate cycle so it's cold water only or something. Because the yarn is pretty hardy. It's just so like if it's in cold and hot water it could felt. So careful. These are a little too big. I knit these on a one and a half back when I was knitting socks on one and a half. The Samphire socks are from the Handmade Sock Society season two by Helen Stewart. Really nice patterns. She has this kind of checklist thing that she does with her pattern so you can like check it off if you're done. Wow, it's getting really light out. It's nice and bright here, but I think it's cold. It's gonna be cold this week. I'm probably talking really quietly. I'm really sorry about that, um, but it's like early in the morning and I don't wanna like yell and wake up my roommate. I don't know if both of them are here right now. One of them's here, but she's way upstairs. Um, I don't know if the other one's here because <laughs> I just got back at like 10 o'clock and she wasn't here then. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, um, okay. Another sock yarn. This one I got at Knit With Attitude. So let's talk about Knit With Attitude. 
Knit with Attitude is about a mile away from Wild, Wild and Woolly. So I was, um, I went to these stores on Tuesday last week with my friend Sarah. Um, Sarah is my friend from Toronto. We went to U of T together, did music, uh, music history. She is also a musicologist. Um, she's still in grad school. I gave up on that. <laughs> and so she's in London doing some uh, archival work. And uh, she, like me, has really found knitting to be like, kind of like something that really is helpful, just generally something to kind of think about that isn't, you know, school and that it's just like a nice way to take up your time when you're kind of traveling and you're by yourself a lot, I think. So she's been going to a lot of yarn shows and going to the stores in London a lot. And I always think it's really nice when like you stay friends with people that you knew, you know, from other things and maybe like wouldn't necessarily be staying in touch with so much um, anymore. But like when they pick up knitting, they'll message you and you get to talk with them. And it's like, you have this like, you know, so like, yeah, we talked a lot about like work and, you know, how things are going with her research and my job and all that stuff. But we, um, when we saw each other, um, caught up on everything, but like we got to also go to a bunch of knitting stores, which we both really like. And so it was just like really fun. Um, so while we went to knit with attitude first, actually, and that again, it's about my, it's just a mile from wild and woolly. So then we walked to wild and woolly and, um, we took the tube there and we took a bus. I think we took a bus there from a tube station. Yeah. Anyway, and um, I have a book, the book by Knit With Attitude, which is um, which is published by Lina. You can get it at Knit With Attitude. They have lots of copies. I got it from Lina, like from the, from like I was buying something from the Finnish, from, from Finland, from them, like a, an issue or something. And I really wanted this. And so I just got the issue and the book together from Finland. Um, and it's a gorgeous book. I'm not sure if the patterns are just like available on Ravelry or if you have to get them in this book. But basically, you can get all the yarns from the patterns at Wild and Woolly, which is really nice. Um, and they've got a nice mix of hand dyed yarns and really woolly stuff. And it's again, it's not, it doesn't look huge, but they have like total treasures. So, um, yeah, I was like, I was really tempted. And I bought a bunch of stuff in Wild and Woolly, and Sarah like was, was like held out, and then she like went for it at, um, at uh, well, at wild and well, I was bad at it with attitude, and she was like, "That's what I mean." And she, uh, she like, reined it in, and then she got a bunch of sock yarn at wild and woolly because she couldn't resist. And I was like, "I know, it's just the worst. Like, it's the best of the worst." So anyway, I got they they had this also at wild and woolly, Garth and Our Snowdonia sock, but they had it at um, I had it with attitude, and I was there first, and so I picked up two skeins. This is 90% Rami and 10% Hebridean, and it is called Glasslin. I'm probably pronouncing that very wrong. Not all of the shades of Snowdonia are 90%, 10%. They're uh, different varieties of wools that they put in, and they'll tell you on the label um, what goes in there. Four ply fingering, 200 meters, 219 yards, 50 grams, organic climate positive wool. This is 100% wool as well. So. Yep, if you're um, if you're not sure about that, it doesn't have nylon. But again, I've got a pair of socks here to show you. Uh, the both of these wools that I used um, in this sock are 100% wool. The lighter color is actually um, old Shibui sock, so it is that's constructed more like a um, like a commercial sock yarn. Um, it's two it kind of two ply. It feels like an 80/20, but it's all wool. So I did use that for the heel heels and um, for the stripes. This is the Hello Sailor socks by Summer Lee. Love these. Um, oh, the Hello Sailors are the sock set. These are the broken rope socks from the Hello Sailor sock set, which I love. I did stripes all the way down, including on the toe. <laughs> um, and I really, really like these. They're super cozy and soft and like warm. Again, I don't know if I'd wear them in boots. Like I don't really want to wreck them, but They've held up, I knit these about six months ago, and I've worn them a lot, I really, really like them. They're cozy, like I said, they're warm. If you don't like itchy things, I don't find them itchy. Like when I touch them like this, it's, it just doesn't feel itchy. Um, but you might be, your feet probably aren't very sensitive compared to other parts of your body, so think about that, but your ankles might be. So maybe make shorties, because your feet are all calloused, like they're in shoes all day. They, I feel like, 
maybe they're more tolerant than other parts of your body. But um, yeah, maybe if you're worried, just use different yarns for the heels and toes or like in the places where you might usually, um, wait, what am I saying? Like where you might usually um, rub like a hole in your socks naturally, depending on your foot. So that's that. Um, so yeah, this is the color I got. You can get these in um, dyed shades now as well. They didn't have any in um, in England in either of the places that I saw this, which were Wild and Wooly and Knit with Attitude. But the Wooly Thistle has the colored shades. They're probably out of some of them because like they're popular, but they have, I'm sure they have some in stock and they are, I wanted the, the dyed shades, but they didn't have any. So I went with the natural. And again, I was getting a lot of sock yarns this time because I'm doing my sock challenge and I thought it would be nice to have some like woolier options to go with the commercial ones. One other type of yarn that I got there um, at, this is at Knit With Attitude, is Hills Fog Soldier. Don't know if I'm saying that right either. This is color 2123. It's like a dark blue, really beautiful. This is 100% Norwegian wool. It's fingering weight, 350 meters. 100% um, Norsk wool. Norwegian. This is hard to get in the US, so I was really excited to see it. It wasn't super expensive. I think this skein was, each skein was like 12 pounds, which is like, I don't know, somewhere in the vicinity of like $17 probably. Maybe more, depending on the exchange rate. I think that's about how much it is. And um, I got three, got two of these, they only had two of this color and one in this color to make a striped sweater. I might even make a vanilla fluff with these. I haven't decided if I'm gonna do a plain just wool striped sweater or if I'm gonna do a striped vanilla fluff. And I don't know if I wanna dye my own mohair, if I can wait for the summer. I have plenty of sweater quantities. Or if I will um, get like some Rama or something. The Rama um, yarn has nylon in it, but, and most of the th mohairs that I use have silk instead of nylon, but Fichu Bouche is also a good option if you like the silk. Generally, really nice. Oh, really nice yarn, a little itchy. Also got a sweater quantity of that for my mom. Um, and mom, if you're watching, I think she usually watches like weeks or months later. <laughs> mom, if you're watching, I'm not telling you what color it is, but it's in the mail today. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I got one other skein of yarn. This I got in, okay, so that was all London. And when I went there on Tuesday and I hung out with Sarah, I also got to see my one of my best friends from childhood. Her name's Anne. Um, she lives there. She's doing a degree at the Royal Academy. And I got to see Anne and her partner, Shafali. And Shafali gave a recital when I was there on Saturday night that was amazing um, at a church. And they gave us wine like to just have before the recital. It was so nice. It was a really, really good, um, good time in London with them as well. Um, with Anna Shafali and we had really delicious bakery food <laughs> and Anne made uh, she made like butter chicken except she made it with paneer and it was really good um, so anyway on <laughs> the in the middle of that all so I saw because I saw Anna Shafali on Tuesday and then I saw them again just like just a couple days ago before I left I stayed with them for a night because they live in London um, and I was it was closer to Heathrow so on Wednesday, I traveled by train, took three trains from Guildford up to the Peak District, which is Derbyshire. Um, and my oldest friend, oldest friend, like person I've known the longest, she's not old, she's also 28. <laughs> We're both 28 <laughs> um, because she's six weeks older than me. Uh, Sachi lives in the Peaks right now. She's about to move to London because she just got a new job, but she... Um, lives in a tiny little town called Caddington with her husband James, whose mom lives just around the around the corner for a Like she lives like a few miles from them, like maybe. So she said it takes four hours to walk from her and James's house to their, James's mom's house. So it must be like 10 miles, <laughs> maybe longer. Um, but they don't have a car. They are carless um, people. They don't like to drive. So it's kind of been amazing to, for them to be there for, James has been there for like almost a year and a half and um, they have to take the bus or walk to get groceries, which is like 90 minutes away on foot. Um, and it's like really slow, kind of meaningful, like intentional way of living. Uh, 
for them and it's just like the place I mean the scenery is amazing and we took Sachi didn't have to work while I was there the two days I was there Thursday and Friday so we walked 15 miles one day and maybe like 10 miles the next day <laughs> um, stunning scenery we saw a lot of sheep um, I will try to put some pictures like over me talking right here because um, like I'm not showing you anything right now um, if I can figure it out. If I can't figure that out on the phone, I will. I know how to do it on iMovie, but I'm not sure, like on the computer, but I'm not sure how to do it on my phone. Anyway, um, I'll put them at the end. I'll put a little slideshow in at the end. There were a lot of sheep in the peaks. Um, Taddington is very close to Bakewell. If you've heard of a Bakewell tart, that is that Bakewell. And Buxton is the train station I came into. Buxton, where did we go? We went to Tideswell. So this is where I got the yarn. So there's a little store in Tideswell called Peak District Yarns, which is mostly a studio. The woman who owns it, uh, her name is Carrie, and she's mostly a dyer, but she has a few other things in her, um, in her shop. So this is what I got. I only, I was like, I only have room in my bag for one skein. And there were so many beautiful ones that I picked up and wanted. But the title, the title, the name of this one just got me. It's called Mouthwash. Because <laughs> it's the color of Listerine. So it's the 7525 sock yarn that I got um, from Peak District Yarns. You can order from Peak District Yarns. Um, she's got social media and a website. And I really wanted the well-dressed, the well-dressing colors because the well-dressing is this thing they do in the peaks where like they literally decorate a well with natural stuff like flowers. And they have um, like pictures that inspire her to dye certain colors. Um, it was really nice. It was close to the church. There's a little church there, St. Joseph's Church maybe. It's pretty big. It's called the Cathedral of the Peaks. Like that's its nickname. It's not a cathedral. Um, because I was like, that's a cathedral. My friend Sachi was like, oh yeah, there's a cathedral because it's called in quotes, Cathedral of the Peaks. And I was like, I, I've never heard of that. And I looked at the list of English cathedrals like 16 million times because that's what my whole thesis was about. Um, but it <laughs> turned out that it wasn't a cathedral. So it was okay. I didn't have an actual heart attack. Um, but yeah, that was really fun. We went to a couple of, we went to a brewery. We went to a pub, we had pub lunch one day. It was just like super, super lovely to be with her. Um, kind of really grounding for us to be together because we've known each other since we were, our parents bought houses next door to each other when we were about three months old. Maybe her parents were already living there. My parents bought the house next door. Um, that was their first house when I was three months old. And so I have never known a life without Sachi. She's my um, my sister, like, ish, basically. Yeah, she, she, she her, her her husband's sister is also has blonde hair. Well, blonder than mine. My hair's not really blonde, but Sachi calls us her two blonde sisters. <laughs> and I met her um, sister-in-law, Catherine, uh, there. And Sachi was like, this is my Christopher. And I was like, who's Christopher? And they were like, oh, that's James's friend from when he was like a little baby. So they just know me as Sachi's Christopher. <laughs> and they finally met me, which was fun. And Sachi was like, this is my other blonde sister, Emma. <laughs> Um, so yeah, yeah, Sachi is um, my oldest friend. Sachi and her sister Lucy, who um, is a couple years younger than us, they're like my sisters too. So that's always, that was really nice to be there with her. Walked a lot, kind of talked about all sorts of things going on in our lives and anxieties we have about aging. And there's certain things I feel like you can really only talk about with people you know who are from where you're from and who've known you for a long time. Like, it feels very easy to get into deep conversations. We saw so many sheep. A lot of the sheep were pregnant, like really like clearly exhausted and just walking around like about to have their lambs. And we saw a few that had already had lambs and they were super cute. They were so cute. Um, yeah, I did. Um, I really like animals, <laughs> um, so I did not touch any sheep because they were, we didn't like jump in any sheep pens. I did, I did touch a horse or two and a cow or two out in the, in Surrey and in the, in the peaks, but I didn't touch any sheep. I just, I just viewed a lot of sheep. 
Um, yeah, and so that was all the yarn that I got. Um, I couldn't get any more. I was like thinking about going to Loop on Saturday because Loop is in London and it was closed on Tuesday when I was there. So uh, I couldn't go, but I was like, I don't think I can fit any more stuff in my in my duffel bag. Like I have a lot of stuff in here already. So instead I went to the V&A and that's where I got this bag, which is, you've probably seen peeps because it's sitting on the table that was holding everything. The Victoria and Albert Museum. Um, I'm a really big, like, I mean, like I'm an, an English historian, so I know a lot about the monarchy and about this kind of thing, but, um, there was a big resurgence of church music towards the end of Queen Victoria's reign, so I am sort of a... That's sad. Cannyham's gonna come downstairs soon, so I gotta finish up. Anyway, I went to the V&A on Saturday. Oh. <laughs> went to the V&A on Saturday and I got this tote bag. I really like William Morris prints. Something exciting is going on upstairs. Um, oh, there's that hand sanitizer. I was looking for that. I got hand sanitizer when I was there because it was only a pound and I didn't have any. I got this book of William Morris patterns. Um, if you're unfamiliar, you should do some Googling. He is was a really interesting uh, artist. This is a really famous one. It's called The Strawberry Thief. Um, I have a mask, like a COVID mask that my mom made me in fabric that I got her from Liberty. I also went to Liberty. But I didn't get any yarn at Liberty. I just got my mom a little um, thing for Mother's Day, so I'm not gonna say what it is. And I got some buttons, because I'm not really a seamstress, but or a sewer as such. But I did have a notebook that has a strawberry thief on it, which I used for writing down knitting notes. Lots of gorgeous just prints and patterns. Uh, he kind of founded the arts and crafts movement, which sounds silly if you've never heard of it, but it's, um, an amazing artistic movement from the mid 19th century. This is already like beat up because it's been in my suitcase. Well loved. I really like the Morris patterns. And I've been wanting one of these for like my whole life. Um, I have Googled it many times, like William Morris glasses case. They have one at the V&A. And I can't tell you what this pattern is called but I probably could if I looked through this book. It was probably in here. And it's huge. It was collapsible, which was really nice. And it says V&A on it. And it's so big because, okay, here's the thing. I have Ray-Bans. I wear Ray-Ban sunglasses. I have one, this sounds ridiculous, but I have one pair of prescription ones and one pair of non-prescription ones. And they're exactly the same, but they're different colors. And it's really hard to find a glasses case that are big enough for Ray-Bans because the Ray-Bans case is soft and you could sit on it and break them. And I don't want that risk in my life, so. The non-prescription ones are brown and the prescription ones are black, so I can always tell the difference. And this one's so big that I can also fit my glasses in here. So, and it comes with a matching cloth. So like, thank you, VNA. And it was only like 12 pounds or something. And this is like, I'm probably gonna sit on it and break it, but like, it's gorgeous. So anyway, that's that. I think that's all. Yeah, it was a really good week. I was really, really, really lucky that I got to go and I didn't have any hassle getting there, getting back with any kind of COVID um, stuff or... It was a lot of moving pieces because I had to fly from Philly because that's where American flies from to England and that's where my miles were. Easy to get to Philly from Baltimore, but I basically had to take a bus to Philly, get on the plane, and then there's like, you know, I. Catherine and Patrick picked me up at the airport because they live close to Heathrow on set when I got there, but like everything else was just like planes, trains, and automobiles. Like yesterday, I took the tube from central London in Pimlico, where Anne and Shafali live, to Heathrow. Then I flew from London to Philadelphia. Then I took the train from Center City, Philadelphia, or from the airport to Center City, Philadelphia. Ate a bunch of Taco Bell because I was starving, and that's what I do when I'm jet lagged. I eat Taco Bell. And then I took the bus back to Baltimore and my roommate Hannah came and got me, even though it was past her bedtime, which was really nice. So I'm back now and I'm, it feels like about 1 p.m. and I'm gonna go to work. <laughs> so anyway, thank you for watching my England adventures with not very much knitting. This has been Tiny Desk Knitting, except not knitting today, with Emma. Bye!